Yo, time to work on the little turbo Honda Civic again. When I was open lapping it, I burned out the 2-3 synchronizer. So I got all new carbon synchronizers for this thing. And some spring thing and some other spring things. And I got this too because it's probably wasted. This is the ring that goes in between the 2-3 synchronizers. Um, I got some brake rotors because it pulsates from doing too many high speed stops. And um, I got a knock link. I already put one of these things in it and it didn't work right. Apparently they had a problem with these things and they said they needed to have it tested. So I shipped it out to them and I waited like three months and they lost it. So they just mailed me a new one. I got some of these washers too, the 12 millimeter ceiling washers for my shift detents. And I'm pretty sure that the reason why my synchronizer burned out is because I was using regular Honda manual transmission fluid when I was open lapping it and they recommend this stuff from Synchrotech. So I got the sticker shock and I bought four quarts of that so I can do this a couple of times. Ordered personalized collector's plates for this thing so I never have to buy tabs again. That way in the state of Minnesota, you'll only need to run the rear license plate. So I could take the front license plate off too when I got this all nice and open. And there was a chunk right here of plastic that I cut out that was for the license plate bracket. So that's pretty cool. Get my air cleaner off first. I just use little quarter inch self drilling screws for this. Had to put edge trim all over the place too around these pipes and all this stuff because this thing was rattling like crazy when I first built it. See how I made this? I've never seen anything like this on a Civic so I just kind of made it my way out of some aluminum plate. I think I used five different pieces. Just like that. Well, everything's dry under here. There's no leaks. That's nice. I put some uh, Valvoline Synchrotech in here in the spring, which did absolutely nothing for me. Yeah, it looks like regular fluid now. It's nice and clean. I put a strap around this bar to hold this side of the engine up. I think it'll work for that. I guess we'll see. It's working. Got the motorcycle lift transmission jack apparatus going on here. I got one loose bolt left on this mount. Let's see if I remember how to do this. When I did the build video on this, I had some people tell me that I put this washer on upside down. It's tapered. So, um, there. It's, uh, it's right now. I think I got that right. I thought I'd end up seeing something seriously wrong with these. All in all, they're not that bad. But yeah, this synchro wouldn't slow down real good at all once in a while. It's really sharp. 
I don't understand why this wasn't working. Don't matter now, I got carbon synchros in here. Now for this miracle idea. I'm gonna put this thing on it. It's supposed to do something. Something or something. Put the new rotors and tires back on it. It's all put together except for that cold air intake. I'm gonna wait a little bit, run this car, make sure it all works right. This Chinese turbo is still holding up. Hooked up that knock link and put it in. Had to put a new wideband in here too because that Innovate wideband I had in here took a crap on me. So I got a PLX. That spring in that shifter is really tight. It's supposed to return into neutral really easy. And it does. That thing's supposed to learn. Green means it's ready. And when it's flashing red, that means it's um, knocking. It's supposed to learn or something. I don't know, it's doing the same thing my last one was doing for right now. I guess I'll have to see if that thing's working. Let's see if my gears work. Well, all my gears are working. Seems to shift a lot nicer. I guess we'll see once I get it on the road. I'm supposed to be nice to it for 500 miles. <laughs> Good luck with that, so I won't be pounding on it in this video. This stupid knock link's doing the same thing the last one was doing. Hit the gas, it just blinks red all the time. What a piece of junk. Well, I have 111 miles on this transmission, 1111. It seems to work just great. I'm going to change out the oil and put that fancy expensive stuff in it now. And uh, I went back and forth with this G4 knock link people and they gave me the run around. That thing's a piece of junk. I got to take it out. It was a waste of bucks. They won't give me my money back. It doesn't work right. I talked to tech support. They don't even know what the heck they're talking about. I, uh, uh, don't ever buy one. It's a piece of junk. I just got ripped off on that deal. Now I'm off to my oil cooler. Um, I did a video on this thing. I put a different thermostat in it, and um, I did a video on that. And I, I made a washer for this thing, too, because this stupid thing, if I just put it in there and screw it down, it just starts digging into the the hole, and it doesn't, it doesn't really seal all the way, so it doesn't really need to, but I made a washer so it's not going to grind down the damn metal in the thing. I put some thread locker on here and, and found some copper shims and tightened those down because I didn't like the rubber O-rings that came with it. The taper inside the body isn't right, so it just tears those up, and that ain't right. And I got an oil cooler for it. What is this, like a 24 or a 25 row oil cooler? Some cheap eBay crap. Comes with hoses. I think one's a little over four feet, one's a little over five. It's got 10 AN fittings on it. I would have rather had hose barbs, but you can't have everything. And then I went down the oil filter rabbit hole because some people say the S2000 filter is better and some people say frams are junk and 
some people say you can use a K20 filter and I went to O'Reilly's and they said that the K20 filter well they said the S2000 filter is the same as the D16 filter and the K20 filter is different I went to Walmart and got a D16 filter and it's bigger than all of them apparently according to O'Reilly's there's no such thing as this one anymore I don't know here's the part number and some people are telling me a smaller filter's got more pressure. And I go to O'Reilly's and the S2000 filter isn't this small anymore. This is a Fram. Tough guard. Micro guard. That's supposed to be some Mexican Wix filter. And then Super Tech is made in the USA. Factory certified. Whatever that means. So I don't know which rabbit hole to go in, and then I go looking down these things, you know, just because I'm checking them out, and um, in an oil filter, it goes through the pump, and the pressurized oil through the pump goes into the outside holes of the filter, gets filtered through into the center, and then goes through the center and back up into the engine and goes through everything in the engine. That's how oil flows, and I look down here in this plastic on the inside and I can see some brown glue in there. And this microguard Wix filters the same way. A bunch of brown glue. And uh, this is for a K20 or a D16. And this is D16 only apparently from Walmart. And then this um, S2000 one, this Fram, there's no glue or anything in here. I think the filter media it looks like it's squished together more, so there's probably more ripples in the media than the other ones, and it's shorter. So um, I don't care what all you fools say out there. This is the filter I'm going to use, because I know there isn't going to be any glue going through my filter. And um, some people are saying a smaller filter gets more oil pressure. I don't even see how that makes sense. Now I'm going to stop making sense, and that's the one I'm going to use. And um, I'm done with the rabbit hole. I'm not buying some expensive crap. Because almost everything you buy is good enough or junk anyways. So there. That's what it is. And uh, I'm just going to get this front bumper off of here. And I'm just going to go to town on this and just do this my way. I won't be doing a video on it until it's done probably because I don't I don't know how long this is going to take and I just want to relax and just do my thing well I'm sure a whole lot of people will tell you a 24 roll will never fit in this car I got it to fit though there was I left like a 16th of an inch gap in between my inner cooler and I just put some silicone in between there just to make sure it's not going to hit I mean it's really sturdy it's not it's not moving at all there's probably about four or five rows that are behind my inner cooler. And I had to cut the bottom mounting tabs off. I don't know if you can see that or not. But I just put some rubber hose in there and zip tied it down in such a way where the zip ties aren't going to hit, hit my metal and cut into anything. I did that on both sides and it kind of fit just right and then on the, and then I could mount the top so I mounted that like so and then I went to my local high school where they have these wonderful signs that are trying to get your children into slavery at a very young age and um, they're really nice because they're cardboardy and they're plastic so they won't get weathered or well, they shouldn't melt. Not with this kind of temperatures. So I did that. I made some duct work and I went around the whole thing. Down on the bottom there's there's some 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 foamy some foamy stuff you get at the hardware store. I got that in between the radiator and the oil cooler. And the reason why I did this is because the fan for the radiator is gonna work with this. And there's actually no grill work down here. It's actually kind of buried, but that's fine because the fan's going to do its job. Now that the duct works in here, it's going to it's going to pull air right through it. 
when I'm driving it. It'll be nice and incognito. That's why I put the black spray paint on the hoses and stuff because I'll put the grill on here and you won't even be able to see it. Just, just like my intercooler, you can barely see it. I put one peg on the bottom too. One of these, I don't know, one of these cheesy zip tie looking pegs you use for for them aftermarket fans. I just have it on one corner and I got a, I got a piece of rubber in between the inner cooler in here too just to make sure it doesn't rub up or anything and it's really solid and sturdy. It's not going anywhere. And then all of these all of these braided hoses, you got to watch out for these because this stuff is worse than 80 grit sandpaper. I mean, it did <laughs> If it starts wiggling around on anything, it's 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 just gonna grind right through everything. So I have it zip tied to my power steering hose, so it kind of moves with the engine, and hopefully it won't grind anything out. I put a bunch of I just got done putting a bunch of wrap around my manifold, try to keep the heat down. So that might help. I don't know. It looks like hell, but it'll work. It'll do the job That's what my oil cooler looks like. I couldn't find any other way to get it I tried to put an extra sandwich plate in here to move it out because I wanted the lines to go down underneath this way but I couldn't get it to do that so they went up that way and that's the best I could do. I let this thing run for about five minutes and I shut it off and I let it sit overnight just to make sure it's not leaking. None of these lines are leaking, which is nice. Now that I know it's not leaking and everything's fine, I'm probably going to do an oil change. This is, this is actually the oil that was in here before. I added like an extra quart and a half to get the level up. And then I'm going to change out the oil and the transmission fluid and put that torque old fluid in it. Here's a good test to see if this works. Uh, my sources say yes. I can feel it pulling air real nice with this fan that's on. I had it running for about 10 minutes. 105 on that one 82 on that one So um, the thermostat probably isn't even open yet on that sandwich plate, but it's still circulating oil anyways just a little bit it's not wide open and It's definitely working Okay, bye